Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack for an update on the ZX Bear Emulator PCB project and if you recall from the last video on the early prototype I'd got the basics working but had a few small issues that needed to be resolved. This whole thing started when PCBWay made me aware of their PCB design contest and I thought well that's something I've never done so let's have a go and if I can do it so can you. Why don't you pop by the PCBWay website and consider entering the contest. They're giving away an ESP32 just for having a go. And who knows, you may unlock a new skill on your achievement wall. PCBWay have been awesome through this process. And as I've said before with regard to sponsorship, I'll only ever sponsor something that I genuinely think is the real deal. And they've been really helpful with this little project too. Anyway, I had a bit of head scratching to do and a fiddling around with the design. PCBWay work their magic and I've got the next iteration sitting here with me and it all works with a little tweak which again is just a silly newbie mistake and is already rectified in the design. Ready for if I decide to do a small production run and that depends on whether any of you lot are interested so let me know in the comments. So this was version 0.1 which I referred to as the purple monster and this is version 1.0. Well technically I guess it's 0.2 but nevertheless this is the red terror. So let's talk through the changes. Change number one is the position of the pie. I've created a little cutout in the PCB to allow the pie to sit naturally in the spectrum case with the pie ports aligned nicely in the cutout for the spectrum expansion port. I'll probably design little plastic filler pieces to make this area and the other unused cutouts look all pretty like and to help stop muck, grime and spiders from crawling in there. I've also added this switch which pokes through one of the three and a half inch jack cutouts on the spectrum case and this allows you to switch on the extended keyboard features and menus of the ZX Bear Emulator without having to do keyboard gymnastics with symbol shift, cap shift and the enter key. I've added in a separate micro USB port here to provide power through the correct power supply cutout on the spectrum case, you know, if you're finickety. This was intended as a cosmetic choice and also to help prevent damage to the power socket on the Pi itself if you're going to be plugging in and out a lot. You don't need this if you just use the socket on the Pi itself, of course. So let's solder it all up and install the Pi and take a look. Well the good news is that yes it does work apart from that one little mistakey poo that I mentioned earlier and that's with this button to switch the extended keyboard features on and off. If you look at the schematics here you'll see I've stupidly wired both of the switch wires to ground. Oh, there we are, fixed for next time. What we'll do here on this board is simply cut one of the ground wire traces and then install a simple patch wire to the correct pin which is GPIO 21 on the Pi. So sit back and relax and watch me undo a mistake that shouldn't have happened in the first place. There, and now it works a treat. Pressing this button is much easier than doing this. I'll pop this nice button cap on too, so it looks nicely finished. Now the only elephant in the room is the cabling. 
every cable I looked for was just too darn long, and unfortunately in the case of the GPIO cable the connectors are just too darn high too so I can't make my own. So I've designed this small PCB that acts as a bridge between the main PCB and the Pi. That'll do just fine and is low enough not to cause any clearance issues. Just a couple of small things to point out. I would like to find a more elegant solution for this SD card. It works okay from the business end, but the cable's far, far too long. And with that in mind, I decided to leave a bit of a gap around the USB socket and of course on the SD card socket as well, just in case I needed a bit of room for different cables. And that's about it for this little progress update. As soon as the final in quotes PCB comes in, let's hope it is the final one, we'll put it all together and take it for various test runs in different Spectrum cases and hopefully it'll all be good. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this little update and we'll see you soon back in the shack. Bye for now.